did you know the first attempt to drill into and sample the mantle was abandoned in 1966 after repeated failures and cost overruns? Most recently, a team drilling through the sea floor of the North Atlantic came as close as a thousand feet to the upper mantle. That is a bit far, but the closest humans have come to directly sample our head's mantle. Seismic methods and volcanic eruptions are therefore depended upon for the study of the mantle. The mantle is the middle layer of the head occurring between the crust and the core. It is separated from the crust by the Moho discontinuity and separated from the core by the Gutenberg discontinuity. Mantle is not even particular to the head, but its characteristics of planetary bodies that have undergone differentiation by density. Some planets, including the head, a number of asteroids, and some planetary moons have mantle. The mantle is almost entirely solid and its temperature ranges from 1000 degrees Celsius to 3700 degrees Celsius. This makes it the source of molten magma. But the molten magma isn't solid as the case of mantle where it comes from. This is because the pressure of the overlying crust prevents melting by increasing the melting temperature of the mantle. Solomon in Ecclesiastes 1 verse 7 said, To the place from which the rivers come, to there and from there will they return. The saying can be used in a similar way relating to magma. All magma comes from the mantle and there will they return. The mantle has a thickness of about 2,900 kilometers, making up about 84% of the head value. That's pretty much. It's predominantly solid, but some parts behave as a viscous fluid. What is the mantle made up of? What is the composition of the mantle? The mantle is ultramafic in composition, having peridotite, a rock dominant by minerals olivine and pyroxene. Remember, Mephic rocks means having iron and magnesium as predominant element. Ultramephic means it has even more of iron and magnesium than mephic rocks and less silica. Other mantle elements include aluminium, calcium, sodium and potassium. The mantle is divided into several layers which include the upper mantle, the asthenosphere, the transition zone, the lower mantle, and the D double prime. At what depth can we find the upper mantle? And what are the characteristics of the upper mantle? The upper mantle extends from the Moho discontinuity to a depth of about 670 kilometers. It is a more malleable region that contributes to tectonic activities. Different discontinuities are identified in the upper mantle which includes the transition zone, 4 and 670 km discontinuity. The 670 km discontinuity is the most complex discontinuity and marks the boundary between the lower and the upper mantle. Two parts of the upper mantle are often recognized as distinct zones in the head's interior, the lithosphere and the asthenosphere. We have discussed the lithosphere a little in the tutorial link popping up in the top right corner. Where can the asthenosphere be found in the subsurface and what are its characteristics? The asthenosphere is denser, weaker layer beneath the lithosphere. It lies between about 100 km to 410 km beneath the edge surface. The temperature and pressure of the asthenosphere are so high that rocks soften and partly melt becoming semi-solid. It is more ductile and viscous than the lithosphere and lower mantle. The viscous and ductile nature of the asthenosphere is responsible for the floating and very slow movement of the lithospheric plate, causing earthquake, volcanic eruption, and other tectonic processes. We will talk more about the dynamic nature of the asthenosphere and its role in earthquake continental drift, volcanic eruption, and other tectonic processes in future tutorials. Subscribe to this channel to stay tuned. When we hear the transition zone marks the boundary between the upper and lower mantle, 
you may imagine it as a thin simple boundary but the transition zone is far more than that in fact it is more than 100 kilometers thick in the transition zone rocks do not melt or disintegrate instead they undergo radical transformation where their crystalline structure changes in important ways making the rocks to become even much denser the transition zone is believed by some geoscientists to prevent large exchange of materials between the hopper and the lower mantle although some believe otherwise that the transition zone is permeable some geoscientists think that the increased density of the rock in the transition zone prevents subducted slabs from the lithosphere from falling further into the mantle. Perhaps the most important aspect of the mantle's transition zone is its abundance of water which is not liquid, vapor, solid or even not in plasma form. Then what other form of water do we have? The water in the transition zone exists as hydroxide, yes, OH-. What is now special about the lower mantle? Everything just looks special about the upper mantle. The lower mantle extends from 670 km to about 2700 km beneath the head surface. It is hotter, denser and less ductile than the upper mantle and transition zone. The only special thing that I can note about the lower mantle is that though its temperature is very high and able to melt it, the lithospheric pressure in the region prevents melting. Hence, the lower mantle is solid despite the high temperature there. Now to the last layer we will be discussing in this tutorial, the D double prime layer. The thickness of this layer varies a lot, it has been detected to be razor thin in some area and as thick accumulations of iron and silicate in other areas. Movement of materials in D double prime is unpredictable, forming diaper and dome shaped geologic features, which emit heat and may release huge amounts of energy and materials that transfers heat to the lower mantle and transition zone. What is the most important thing you learned from this video? Please share in the comment section. Feel free to ask questions too. Thanks for watching.